Hello, my fellow Christian brothers and sisters. This is going for you, Christians, who act so religious, but yet show no love. Let me read from 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 3. Though I speak with tongue of men and of angels, and have not charity, or you can also say it as love, or but do not love, it's the same thing. Love is charity, charity is love. That's another word for it, basically. I become a sounding bat brass, or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of, of all faith, so I could remove mountains and not have charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to the, feed the poor, and though I give my body to, the burn, to be burned and have not charity, It is profited. It is profited for me nothing. What is love? What is charity? Well, let's continue. It means you suffer long. You're kind, you and and these not you don't envy anybody. You don't vaunt it not itself. And you do not boast. Or you do not behave in unseemly manners, nor seeketh your own way, or you're not easily provoked to do evil. You that you rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoices in all the truth. That you beareth all things that come upon you, and believe all things, hope all things, and endureth all things. How can you get love? Well, first John four eight says God is love. God is charity basically. To receive God, you must receive Jesus. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh who came upon the earth to give himself as a ransom for your sin so you can live. For the those who keep doing evil and act so religious like go to church. What it's basically saying, if you go to church and do all the good things, but you still, you know, love evil, 
and you do the evil things of this world and do your best not to commit those sins, you don't have Jesus in your life. You really don't. The only way to, ask, to get Jesus in your life is to truly ask Jesus to truly come into your heart and change you. You won't be able to do it on your own. No man, no flesh can do it but Jesus. Through the Holy Spirit. Jesus came not to judge the world, but so the world might live through him. But it's up to you. Jesus at one point will come and he will judge the wicked who have not known Jesus. Who kept doing evil and evil and evil every waking moment of their life. Who never repented. These people will be tormented forever. There is no ending to their torment. That goes to the Christians too. The people who truly live hellish lives. And you know who you are. I'm not judging you. I'm telling you what's going to happen. He said this straight in the Bible. That there's people that proclaim themselves believers in Christ. That live hellish lives. These people will be in hell. They will not enter the eternal glory in the kingdom of God. Because their sins they love too much. I am not trying to pick on the on those type of Christians, but I'm telling them the truth. I am telling you the truth out of love and compassion that I don't want to see you go to hell. That's going to be more scary for me than it is going to be for you. So. Because I tried to warn you so you don't didn't have to go. But I know some of you will still go because you still would not take heed of the word of the true word of the Lord in the Bible and not hear what and not just listen what the people tell you in the churches. You should be reading what the Bible tells you. Listen to what they tell you, but don't do what they say. It, Jesus is the only one who can help you. But most of those preachers uh, that are preaching are worth some sheep clothing. They're telling you that you're allowed this. You're basically just, you know, you can do whatever you want. You're free. You know, when that's, you are free, but at the same time, if you keep living in sin and not, you know, start to change your life, you will still go to hell, go, you know, be burned into hell because you did not change. These preachers will be burning for their um, their hypocrisy and uh, what do you call it? The heresy. I pray for these preachers that pray that 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 that, that preach this type of message that Jesus came to the world to die for our sins. Yes, you're basically allowed to go sin and whatnot and blah, 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 blah. You can, you know, and do it your own way and blah, 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 blah. These preachers are not telling you the truth. Why do you think they commit, like, sexual immorality with one another, you know? Why do you think they do that? Because they've been telling a lie. Why do you think they, most of the Catholic priests touch little kids? Because they're telling you a lie. They can't, uh, they can't bear the sense that they must live holy as well. You, you must start to live holy and righteous before the Lord. Jesus made it possible now you, that you can through the Holy Spirit. Before Christ came, you could never do it in your own strength. 
but through the Holy Spirit, you can live righteous and holy before the Lord. You must, you have to, or else you will not see the kingdom of heaven. Jesus says it over and over and over. You must do everything you can to get rid of these sins. You must truly start to hate sin and truly, uh, not just, just proclaim I hate it. You must literally have your life show it that you hate sin. So that the, the unbelievers will believe that there is a God and he is a, you know, a righteous judge. These are the reasons that the people do not believe it because our actions in our lives. These people see our lives and they say, no, there is no God. They're doing, they're, you know, they're living in hellish life like we are, so why should we care, you know? They're going to hell with us. We're all going to hell, according to them. No, we're not all going to hell. There are righteous people in this world through the blood of Christ that have truly saw their wrong ways and now truly desiring to go the other way towards God the best way that they can. Now I tell you, you unbeliever, before I leave, don't go by what you see. Go by faith in God. That's the only way you will know the truth. And the truth will truly set you free. And when you want to truly desire God more and more and more, and His Spirit is laid upon you, your joy would be abundant. You would never be unhappy again. You might get upset with people because they've done you wrong, but you, at the same time, you, you knew it would come because you're doing the right thing. You proclaimed this in the Bible, Matthew 24, Mark 11, Luke 13. These, the people who are truly Christians, who are truly trying to follow the Lord, like me and other people in this world, these people are being persecuted around the world, in the Middle East. Those people are truly of God and truly of Christ. You see all the persecution against Christians in the news today that was prophesied in 24, Matthew 24. Go read for yourself and you will know the truth that Jesus did die for your sins. And that he did come to give you a new life. A life worth having. In the end, when you, you know, go before God, God will judge all of us, including me. I just pray with all my heart that I have life, you know. I'm not perfect. I know I'm, you know, living a righteous life before Him. I'm doing my best. Just like, you know, Joyce Meyer says, I'm not where I'm supposed to be, but I'm glad I'm not where I used to be. <laughs> I love that saying. I, I can truly say I have changed. I know I'm reborn into the kingdom of God. I know what my name is written in the book of life. How do I know? Because my life shows it. I know without a shot of a doubt that I will live forever. And I'm not trying to boast at all if you th those who are thinking I'm boasting. I'm just telling you the truth, what I know. But by my life, that I have changed my life from a hell, truly living life to just living godly. I've seen my errors and my ways and my youth, and how stupid was I? I, tr I could have probably had a much better time following the Lord if I stayed in the faith when I was younger. But, you know, out of my heart, out of our heart that deceives us and the world that deceives us, we stray away. But the people are truly of, lo of the Lord. They will come back. And they really will give glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they will start to live the right be in the right mind, living righteous, and living holy. You see, we say all these things to true Christians to help you, unbelievers, and scoffers, and 
and you fake Christians. I'm going to tell you the truth that you are fake Christians. Fake those who get high, get drunk, who don't even desire to change. I pray that you, at some point, realize where you're heading and that you change your direction towards God and repent, repent, repent. We are living in the, I duly believe that we are in the tribulation hours. The, the, all the things that we've been taught, I duly do believe that we are heading toward the great tribulation. In the seven year peace treaty that will become signed, I do believe that's like a a disguise, you know what I mean, from the real truth. Like when they say the peace treaty is, is here, that we wait for the abomination now. Now I do believe we're about to see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet. I even, if, if you, um, if you go to Fire Charger, Andy, you know, Andy Fire Charger's page, he will explain more of what I'm talking about. And I do, I have been known that for a while. I just didn't know if I was right. You know, I do believe that we're way past the, you know, the pre-trib. I do believe we're in the tribulation. I believe that we are in the middle of the tribulation. So to let you know, I'll just go ahead and say it for Andy. Yes, I do believe now that the rapture is post-tribulation. I used to think it was pre-trib, but, oh well. God have mercy upon our souls. I pray for the for all you people, godly and ungodly. For the ungodly to seek Jesus to be saved from the wrath of God coming. And for the godly to stay in the faith. Stay righteous before the Lord. We're almost, you know, it's almost done. The, the world's about to be gone. And there will be a new earth, a new heaven, and a new creation of this whole thing. Sin will be abound no more. And the devil will be in hell forever, burning for his sins for a thousand years. And then the... When the thousand years are up, the devil will be unleashed once more to deceive the world for a time. I pray with all of my heart that you truly, truly realize where we're heading.